Follow my feet back up. Oh, no and, kidding. And it's not with it. I ain't for a couple of years. No, I would like to have this in case I want to. Troy is some football player. He was unbelievable. Big play. I didn't read this email from Carol Crown. Yes, sir. I didn't know. I uh, my phone died. Oh, really? So I had to recharge it. So I don't know. Just so you know, we're live. So I, uh, I, I, I just got a couple of notes. Oh. Yeah. I didn't get anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that I don't need to do. just myself. I apologize. I should have asked. Thank you. You're This is the number I gave that you wrong. Seven five. Two one seven five. It's like it's going to open up outside any minute now. Remember that my alarm went off last time. Remember at, at the house? No, here. Remember when you're and when you were yes. Talking? I don't know what happened. It was my it hasn't happened since, Brian. Just when you were talking. My sister said it's pouring down in Sea Caucus. Like really? yeah, she said she can't even see out the window. It's pouring so hard. Oh, we need yeah, the rain. Good. We need it. Oh, we need it. The rain that we had this morning was pretty good. Yeah. My grass almost looks like it's not hay looking. I know. It looks <laughs> Melody. I hope it doesn't. We to a mud day. Mud bath. Rain. I see all the um, the sod I just put in last year is going to be floating down the street. <laughs> Call the meeting to order. For the clerk, please read the statement of the meeting. Adequate notice of this meeting was provided to the public and the press on January 14th, July 29th, 2022 and was posted at the municipal building in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10, semicolon 4-7. Thank you. Please stand and join with me in a salute to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes. Vice President Bouchery. Here. Council Member Fury. Here. Council Member Lynch. Here. Council Member Shortway. Here. Council President Rizzuto. Here. This evening we have a presentation scheduled for a company in Dovita. They are here for a, re a retail cannabis license application expressed in our resolution 22 208. Well, the Representatives or uh, those speaking for uh, Indovita, please step forward, come to the podium or the table in front and uh, give us your name. Thank you, Council President. Yes, I am. Council President, in the, uh, in the, on the agenda, it says uh, uh, resolution 22-210. I'm sure. It was okay. I, I'm sorry. I, I did. Oh, you did. I'm sorry. I wasn't looking at. I apologize. Yeah, I. I don't. I didn't have it either, Brian. Oh, so okay. If I had the old one. <laughs> but I, in my inimitable fashion. <laughs> thank you, uh, Council President. Thank you, Council Members, Mayor. Um, my name is Ryan McGee. I am uh, an attorney at Riker Danzig. I am actually counsel to Indoveda. Uh, I suspect you're not all that interested in hearing just from me tonight, and you won't be. But I figured I would, uh, I would leave. Um, Indoveda has applied to the state of New Jersey to the Cannabis Regulatory Commission for a Class 5 uh, cannabis retailer license. Um, more importantly for tonight's purposes is also with the proposed location located at 218 Route 94 here in Vernon Township. On July 11th uh, this year, we sent a uh, 
a letter to the business administrator, township attorney, to the mayor, requesting an opportunity to discuss with the township representatives, site location, zoning considerations, uh, and the township's licensing scheme. And I can't tell you how grateful we are for the opportunity to address the entirety of the council tonight uh, and to make this brief presentation. Um, like I said before, I suspect you're more interested in meeting the owner of Indivita, so I'll just lead by maybe uh, addressing some threshold legal issues that I like that I, I like to raise with the council. Uh, the chief of those being, why exactly are we here before the council tonight? So the Cannabis Regulatory Commission requires, as part of its application process, any applicant that is looking to submit a conversion or an annual license application to accompany that application with a resolution of municipal support from those municipal municipalities that have a governing body like Vernon Township. So that is the reason why we're here today. We are seeking a resolution of municipal support from Vernon Township, to the location at 218 Route 94. Um, I, I, I would say that a resolution of municipal support is a little bit of a misnomer in the way that it's phrased. Um, the CRC has issued regulations and they have dedicated an entire subchapter entitled municipal authority. And in that subchapter, from a legal perspective, that's what outlines the impetus behind these resolutions of municipal, municipal support, what they should be used for, and how the CRC, uh, the types of things that CRC looks to see that they're addressing. Section 17, colon 30-5.1, is that municipal authority section of the Cannabis Regulatory Commission regulations. Subsection G, I think, is pertinent for tonight. Um, and that reads that a municipality may demonstrate proof of local support for the suitability of cannabis business's proposed location by indicating that the intended location is appropriately located or otherwise suitable for activities related to the operations of the proposed cannabis business with the adoption of a resolution by the governing body. Yeah, and what's interesting about that CRC regulation is it addresses the property uh, the threshold question is whether or not this property is compliant with municipal codes and ordinances. And obviously, that's an important inquiry for the CRC to know, because as they're issuing these licenses, they want to know early on whether or not the actual real estate in question is a place that, let's say, for example, is properly zoned and is overall going to be suitable for those types of activities as a cannabis retailer. Um, as much as I uh, can sit here and tout the bona fides of the Indivita team, and, and I certainly am inclined to do so. At the end of the day, the, the resolution of municipal support is not really a referendum on the applicant themselves, but more so the suitability of the property that's been identified. Um, and in fact, there's a separate provision in the CRC regulations that do give a township the opportunity to voice preference for very specific applicants that's in a resolutions of municipal support. Um, and that is something that happens at a later, later stage in the process. Um, in terms of the property suitability that we've identified, really the threshold issue in most municipalities, not unique to, to Vernon, is the zoning for that property. And uh, Vernon Township acted uh, recently and wisely in, in amending some of their local co codes and ordinances to account for what's happened since cannabis has been legalized in the state of New Jersey. So section 330.160 of the municipal code is titled Scheduled Permitted Uses. Uh, and in that code provision, Township recently amended it to add cannabis retailers as conditionally permitted uses in all commercial and retail zones in the township. So the property identified by Indiveda and that they're seeking a, a resolution of municipal support related to is located in the C3 zoning district. That is a commercial district where cannabis retail is a conditionally permitted use under the municipal code. And of course, we say that with an acknowledgement that we would also down the road have to comply with section 330-186 that addresses uh, any number of land use and zoning issues that have to be satisfied as well. But a separate inquiry from the resolution we're seeking tonight. Um, tonight, it, this is a bit of a unique uh, inquiry in, in the fact that this council has previously passed a resolution, resolution 22-77, declaring 218 Route 94, the very same property that we're asking for consideration for tonight for a resolution, has previously declared it to be suitable for cannabis retail sales. Um, albeit at that time, this was at the end of March, I believe at the March 28th meeting that that happened, was related to a different applicant. 
um, and presumably they, they ultimately did not have site control and, and, and that's perhaps why we're here today. Uh, but it is a unique scenario where essentially this council has already reviewed this property and has already acknowledged by way of resolution that it is in fact an appropriate property for the uh, operation of a cannabis retailing. Um, at the end of the meeting, and the, the, I, I took a look at the meeting minutes, and I think it was uh, Council Member Lynch who aptly noted that the, this resolution is only in support of the applicant going forward with the state. And I read that to mean that this is a resolution so that this applicant can proceed with the necessary application process for the Cannabis Regulatory Commission. That's what we're asking the Council for tonight as well. We are asking for a necessary component to our application so that we can continue to navigate the cannabis regulatory application process. We can continue to satisfy all the requirements that are made upon us and, and we're happy to do, do so. This is a <clears throat> one of many uh, steps in the process and certainly not the last time we would be coming before the council seeking a conversation and input as to what, the best way that we can go about it. I can tell you that we can give you some, some greater assurances than perhaps you did receive the last time that you declared the 218 Route 94 property to be appropriate as a cannabis retailer. And for one, I can represent that Indivita LLC has site control. They have execute, executed a commercial lease agreement for the property in question here tonight. So you have that, and I believe that was circulated amongst the council or perhaps through the township attorney uh, in July. Um, and going beyond that, and perhaps removing it a bit from the property itself, uh, one thing unique to Indivita LLC that I think is relevant not only for the township but for the state, their policy goals of social equity and the legalization of cannabis, is that Indivita LLC is a certified minority-owned business certified by the state of New Jersey. So we help that proudly and we bring that to the council for your consideration as well. Um, so that's mostly it for me, the lawyer. I would be remiss if I didn't make a few quick comments about the team at Indovita before I turn it over uh, to, to Mr. Verk to address the council more substantively, but I might think highly enough where I think it's important for me to make a few comments. So the Indovita, Indovita ownership team is comprised primarily of Yogi Verk. He has over 30 years of retail experience through his own business, through his family businesses. Um, collectively, they have approximately 45 locations throughout the state of New Jersey, gas stations, convenience stores like 7-Eleven, uh, Red Mango, Subway, uh, food locations. Um, so aside from the years of experience in retail, aside from the volume of operations that they actually have, I also think it's notable that these are industries that are highly regulated industries. Um, gas stations, certainly, uh, dealing with both federal and state level regulations there. Um, and even food service, having to deal with the, the heightened regulations that, that uh, are required through that as well. And I bring that to the council's attention because as an applicant, although, although the resolution is, is purely about the property itself, uh, I do think it's worth knowing that these applicants are well suited and well mo motivated to partner with the township here in opening up a cannabis retail store. Um, aside from pure retail experience, Mr. Verk uh, is also uh, uh, the CEO and owner of Kepler Base, which is an IT company that he founded, software development, support, a bunch of other things that I probably wouldn't be able to articulate well to the council tonight. And, and I raise that because pair that with his retail experience. Um, Mr. Verk is somebody that has demonstrated something that I believe is very important to a township to consider, particularly when there is a promise, transfer tax dollars available for the town, which is, is this new burgeoning business likely to be successful? Are they going to open their doors? And are those doors going to stay open? And Mr. Verk has not only shown that he has the requisite retail experience to do that, but he has launched his own business and they have been successful for many years. He is an entrepreneur among entrepreneurs. Uh, Mr. Verk is joined by his wife as well, Dr. Valkyrie Graywall Verk. She is the Vice President of Community Outreach and Engagement at Hackensack Meridian Health. Another app qualification for opening up a retail cannabis store here in Vernon Township because her business, her title is understanding communities and it's understanding communities like Vernon and what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, what makes them tick. And I think that's invaluable for a small business that's starting up locally. Um, and I also think it pairs perfectly with the context through which she has that experience, which is in the healthcare field. 
Cannabis in New Jersey did not, although it might seem like it happened overnight by way of constitutional amendment, we've had medical cannabis in the state of New Jersey since 2010 or 11. Um, and the natural progression for cannabis legalization from New Jersey stemmed from a medical context. And I believe Ms. Graywald Burks or Dr. Graywald Burks uh, healthcare experience is going to bring appropriate perspective and context to the way that Indivita chooses to do business in the township. We have other members of the team as well that I, I won't take up uh, any more of your time, but a security director, uh, that uh, the former chief of detectives, Bergen County Prosecutor's Office, who has run large paramilitary organizations um, and just uh, dealing with internal affairs, intelligence, counterterrorism, um, and a number of other members that we can bring onto the team as well. But rather than take up much more of the council's time, uh, if, if you'll indulge me, I would like to see uh, some of my time to Mr. Yogi Burke so that he can address the council directly. Is that okay? Thank you. Good evening, um, council president, Good evening. Uh, council member, mayor, chief Walker. Thank you uh, uh, for, for giving me the opportunity to come before you to talk about um, uh, myself and just the, the overall business and what we're thinking. We have shared the uh, the business deck uh, with uh, the council, but I'll just briefly go over uh, some of the items that uh, that I feel that are important for people's future. Um, um, as Ryan uh, mentioned, that uh, that we come from retail background, and uh, this retail background is gas station, convenience stores uh, throughout New Jersey. And, uh, you know, it was started by my father-in-law, uh, so in the late 70s. And the one thing that he taught us uh, as he was growing his business was to be part of the community. So he always said to make sure wherever we go, start a business, make sure you reach out, whether it's a nonprofit, whether it's the D.A.R.E. program, whether it's just, uh, you know, helping the school, you know, uh, football team or whatever, whatever small things that you can do, make sure you do that. And that's the approach that we're taking for this business as well, because we understand that this is a unique business. Uh, we want to make sure that we come as a partner and have a true partnership with the with the township and not just a, a business operator who just comes in and flies in and set things up and leave. That's not that's not how we want to operate. This is going to be a business that we want to run and operate here uh, in Vernon itself. Um, it, those are the type, you know, those are the things that at least we learned that uh, a value of relationship, and we're fortunate and and, and uh, grateful that we have those relationships in various towns, uh, and they're they're more like friends to us now, and they see us as friends of the community. Uh, same thing for this business venture. Uh, we feel that that we have a, a great team. We feel that we will be um, good for the township. I, I know a lot of people talk about uh, that it's the two percent. Uh, tax revenue. Uh, that's uh, that's the small portion that I feel that okay, that's in the, the regulations. We want to go above and beyond. Uh, whether it's hiring uh, local uh, Vernon residents, we'll give priority to all the local uh, you know applicants. We'll make sure these are high-paying uh, jobs. And I think from what we know from uh, the business plan that we have put together, it'll be about. 13 to 15, uh, you know, full-time, uh, part-time jobs. And we'll make sure that we give priority to the Vernon Township, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, veterans, whether it's uh, minorities, to make sure that we, we do uh, some of the good work that maybe this plant or this flower, uh, people see it in a negative ways. Um, the other piece, uh, so when we were learning about this business itself, we traveled uh, to Colorado, to Massachusetts, to Michigan, just to learn about the business, talk to business owners, uh, talk to some of the, the community members, talk to some of the townships and stuff. Um, security was another aspect of, of, of this business that everybody uh, made sure that, that, you know, uh, that we have proper security and stuff. So we uh, partner up, we have somebody on the team that is, is a, really a great asset for us. Um, and we'll make sure that we work with the township PD uh, we make sure that they have access to our uh, store, access to, to anything 24-7 live feed that, that we'll have for the security cameras, uh, access uh, you know, at, for a resource where if there is something that they need to reach out, I'll make sure that I'm the, the, the first contact for, for that. So 
those are certain things that I feel that, that we can do today. Um, and I'm, I'm here to, to request that if there's anything uh, that I can address, anything that, that you feel that should be added uh, to our business plan, to our outreach, uh, you know, I'm open to suggestion. The idea for me is, is to learn from you, adapt, and make sure that we have a successful business in town. And uh, I, again, thank you for your time. And thank you for uh, having uh, us to present. And I hope I get your support. Thank you. Does anybody from the council have any members of the council <coughs> questions? I, I have none at this time. I have none. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All members of the council have received copies of the have any comments questions on it a question I, I have nothing okay no, I don't have any nothing All right, hearing none, I'll move on. Maybe have the comments from the mayor. Thank you so very much, Mr. Council President. I have just three items that I want to share in my comments tonight. Item one, I have often spoken about the care and attention that we in Vernon Township give our senior citizens. And I have frequently spoke about the high quality of the many recreational and sports programs that our town offers its tweens and teens. In fact, our recreational and sports programs are the envy of many towns. On tonight, I want to note the fact that consistent with my vision of making Vernon Township an even better place to live and raise a family of all ages, we have not forgotten the little ones in our families. In fact, we have a growing list of programs that we are developing and implementing for Vernon families with what we call little ones. Already this year, we have provided families with little ones the opportunity to participate in and view a sidewalk art festival, the opportunity to participate in an Easter egg hunt, the opportunity to participate in a nature walk with the mayor. And we are currently in the process of planning an art in the park series just for those ages five and under. Earlier this month, I had the enjoyment of observing one of the other programs that our town provides to families with little ones. This event was the graduation ceremony of the 2022 class of the Safety Town Program. The Safety Town program is a national program for young children that was founded by Officer Fran Bowles of, of Mansfield, Ohio in 1937. Officer Bowles developed this program after he had to respond to an incident in which a child on his way to school was struck and killed by a car. His program eventually led to the founding of the National Safety Town Center in 1964 and to the development of safety town programs in towns throughout our nation. This year, Vernon's safety town program focused specifically on those little ones who would be entering kindergarten in the year 2022. It offered fun, filled, appropriate safety lessons on a host of pertinent topics. Vernon's safety town program is planned, it's organized, it's directed, it's coordinated, and it's controlled by the Vernon PAL organization on a contractual agreement between the PAL and the town. This is a contractual agreement in which the PAL plans, organizes, directs, coordinates, and administers a large number of programs on behalf of the town. I want the public to rest assured that as we move Vernon forward, this mayor and this council will not be forgetting our little ones. Item two. Item two relates to the fact that in April of this year, the town's longtime 
high quality fuel service provider, Bob Baldwin Transportation ceased operation. While the owner, Bob Baldwin, had given the town three plus years notification of his plan to cease the operation due to COVID related issues, supply chain problems, and material shortages, we have just recently been able to get the new municipally owned fuel station up and fully operated. Our new fuel station is a state of the art, cost effective and efficient operation that conveniently enables our police department, our firefighting companies, our EMS organizations, our Department of Public Works and other municipal organizations that use municipal vehicles to obtain needed fuel on a 24 seven basis. Now that we have a municipally owned and operated fueling station, we are working with the Vernon Township School District to determine if the municipality and the school district can save the taxpayers some money by having the municipality to supply the school district's vehicle fuel needs through a shared service agreement. I want to thank the team of Business Administrator Volker, Municipal Engineer Stoner, Department of Public Works Head Babcock, and Fleet Maintenance Head Rebello for their successful planning, organizing, directing, coordinating, and controlling efforts that enable our town to make this needed fueling station possibility. And finally, item three. I understand that some of my governing body colleagues do not share the same degree of excitement as I do about the soon to be open town center pump track special amenity. And quite frankly, over the past several months, a one-on-one -on -one discussion with some of them, I have grown to better understand and not only understand, but to respect their points of view on this issue. As I have previously said, while the town center pump track will without a doubt be one more amenity that will make Vernon a more enjoyable and recreational healthy town in which to live, and it will enhance Vernon's status as the premier of Four Seasons municipality in Northwest New Jersey, in which individuals can enjoy a host of outdoor activities. While all of these things are true, my strong support of the town center palm track is based on the fact that I view it as an investment in our town center area. And I view it as an investment that I believe will serve as a magnet to attract a host of individuals to our town center. In addition, I believe that capitalistic minded, smart and enterprising individuals will view these hosts of new visitors to our town center as potential new customers in need of goods and services, which will then be a significant motivation for these capitalistic minded, smart enterprising individuals to develop new commercial ventures in our town center. That is my belief and that is my hope. The current strong and continuous growing enthusiasm for the town center pump track has only strengthened my hope and belief that this special amenity will in fact serve as the people magnet that I have always believed that it would. The latest example of this growing enthusiasm was reflected in the volunteer help that the town received this past Saturday at the pump track site. Because of the opening of schools in some regions of our country, and the near-term opening of other schools throughout the nation, suppliers of the playground grade mulch that we will use at the town center pump track were not able to provide the town a reliable long-term availability delivery date for this project. And when they gave us just three days notice that they would be delivering the playground grade mulch that we needed for the pump track, we contacted some of the key individuals who have repeatedly told us that they wanted to play the same type of supported role for the pump track that the Vernon Youth Baseball Organization and the Vernon Horseshoe League play in maintaining certain facilities in Veterans Memorial Park. And the Vernon Youth Football and Cheering Programs play in maintaining certain facilities at Maple Grange Park. With just three days notice on this Saturday, a total of 41 volunteers showed up at the pump track site to support the work project of spreading playground mulch in certain interior portions of the pump track. The group of volunteers consisted of 34 Vernon residents and three and seven uh, out-of-town supporters. And they consisted of fathers, 
They consisted of mothers and children, and it ranged in ages from three years to 77 years. Um, I won't tell you why I know that one was 77 years. His name is Howard Burrell. Uh, while I was very pleased at this volunteer effort, I was not at all surprised. But these kinds of volunteer efforts seem to be a built-in part of the pride that Vernon residents have for our town. For example, it was volunteers that responded to the town's need to have the wooden fences at Maple Grange Park stained to keep them from rotting. It was Vernon youth football and cheer parents and students who volunteered to repaint and apply outstanding looking Viking logos to the announcer's booth at the Maple Grange Park football field. It was a Vernon artist who volunteered to paint a beautiful mural on an interior wall in our senior center. And a Vernon resident has volunteered to design and build an irrigation system for the Vernon Community Garden. These efforts by our volunteers not only contribute to Vernon being an even better place to live and to raise a family, they also save the taxpayers' dollars. With that, uh, Mr. Council President, that is my comments for tonight. Thank you very Thank much. You. All members of the council have received copies of the minutes of, minutes of our uh, July 12th special executive session, our regular meeting of July 25th, and our regular meeting of August 8th and the executive session of August 8th. May I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Place them on the floor individually. I'll second it. The motion is made by Mr. Lynch, seconded by Mrs. Bucciri. For the minutes of July 12th, may I have a motion? I'll, I'll make a motion. Thank you. The motion is made by Mr. Fury. Any questions? Uh, I'm sorry, is there a second? I want a second. Second by Mrs. Bucciri. Is there any second? Is there any, I'm sorry, is there any questions or additions on this? If not, may I have a roll call, please? Sure. Thank you, President Bucciri. Yes. Council Member Fury. I abstain. Council Member Lynch. Um, I, uh, yes. Council Member Shortway. I abstain. Council President Rizzuto. Yes. Motion carries. And for the, can I, can I make a vote? Uh, uh, who made the motion to, I, accept? I, I, I might have. I think that we need to redo that because you weren't at the meeting. I made a mistake. Oh yeah, and my and my name is spelled wrong. Okay. Let's do that again. I'll make the motion to accept the Y twelve uh, special executive sign. Oh, okay. Thanks, Brian. Okay. All right, I'll second it. Seconded by Mrs. Bucciri with the correct. You have to rescind the last vote. Oh, that's right. Okay. May I have a motion to rescind the last vote? I'll make a motion on the minutes of July twelfth. Motion made by Mrs. Bucciri. Is there a second? I'll second that. Seconded by Mr. Lynch. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. May I have a motion to place July 12th on the floor? I'll make a motion. Motion made by Mrs. Bucciri. Is there a second? I'll second that. Seconded by Mr. Lynch. Uh, may we have a all in favor, signify by saying aye. Oh, no. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Do we have a sufficient number of eyes? Yeah, we got three eyes. Both, three eyes, okay. The council president, can we just be on the record that I'm abstaining? We have a roll call, please. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe we have a roll call. Sure. <laughs> Vice President Bouchieri? Yes. Council Member Fury? Abstain. Council Member Lynch? Yes. Council Member Shortway? Abstain. Council President Rizzuto? Yes. Motion passes. <clears throat> For the minutes of July 25th, our regular meeting, may I have them? Uh, I think there's a motion on the floor already, right? Uh, no. No. May I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion. Motion made by Mr. Fury. Is there a second? I'll second it, Mr. President. Second it by Mr. Shortway. Any additions, questions, or deletions on this minute? Not roll call vote, please. 
Vice President Boucheri? Yes. Council Member Fury? Yes. Council Member Lynch? Yes. Council Member Shortway? Yes. Council President Rizzuto? Yes. Motion carries. For the minutes of our regular meeting of August 8th, may I have a motion to place these on the floor? For I'll make that motion. Motion made by Mr. Lynch. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Seconded by Mr. Shortway. Any, any questions or any deletions or comments? No. Not roll call vote, please. Vice President Boucheri? Yes. Council Member Fury? Yes. Council Member Lynch? Yes. Council Member Shortway? Yes. Council President Rizzuto? Yes. And for the executive session of August 8th, 2022, um, may I have a motion to place I'll these minutes on the floor? Motion made by Mrs. Boucheri. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Second by Mr. Shortway. Is there any comments on this? Do we questions? Not roll call vote, please. Vice President Boucheri? Yes. Council Member Fury? Yes. Council Member Lynch? Yes. Council Member Shortway? Yes. Council President Rizzuto? Yes. Motion carries. May I have a motion to open up the floor for public comments on the giant? I'll make that motion. Items only, three minutes per person. Motion made by Mr. Lynch. Is there a second? I'll second it. Seconded by Mr. Fury. Fury. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Floor is open for members of the public to address the council. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to step up to the podium and give us your name. So, you have three minutes to address us on agenda items. Is there anyone from the Skybox? Mm -hmm. Yes. I have Phil. Phil? Yes. May. Yes, hi. Welcome, Mr. Durant. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Okay, so um, uh, regarding uh, resolution for uh, 22208, um, I'm, I'm hoping that you guys are going to vote in favor of that resolution. Okay. Hello. Yes, I, I hear you. Okay, so that, that that's all. That's all for this. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Doreen Edwards. Ms. Edwards. Can you hear us? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Um, in you. regards to Ordinance 2216, um, it mentions uh, initials of a company, C-S-C-T-K-R-L-L-C. Now, I try right. to research to see who specifically that is, and best as I could tell, just by the website, is Optimum. Um, and it's funny because we just had our annual meeting in Highland Lakes, which I'm part of that community as well. And um, everybody's complaining about our cable service. Many of us do have optimum. It's getting worse instead of better. We're going backwards instead of forward. So when I was at the um, recent Sussex ca the fair in Augusta, there was a company called uh, Planet Networks who was touting that they're doing, starting to open up business in Sussex County, a lot of different towns. Um, I don't know if they approached Vernon. I got the impression that they did. Uh, I hope we can consider another um, carrier in this, in this area because to be quite frankly, quite frank, I'm tired of paying high amount of money and never being able to get on the Wi-Fi. It's very disgusting and uh, I appreciate you consider that. So I guess my question is, is this optimum? And do they have to come forward every year and ask permission to do business in our town? And if so, did that other company I mentioned also ask? Thank you. Thank you. First, regarding Ordinance 2216, I've uh, been requested by the, the applicant to be called. So 2216 will not be heard tonight. And as far as who they are, that's part of what was going to be in terms of the question and answer. And as uh -huh. far as your sec the second question, 
where we approached, I can't speak for anyone but myself. I wasn't, I don't know if the administration was approached in any fashion. Normally this comes to the, either the clerk or through the mayor's office uh, for a position on the agenda where we might hear from them. So that's, that's the sum total of my knowledge on that. Is there anyone else on the, any other council members that have anything to add? No. Nothing. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Mrs. Intelligio? No, I don't see any. I'm sorry. Jessica Palladini. Mrs. Palladini. Good evening. A couple of questions and comments. Hardly enough time to address township matters. Um, I'm wondering, does the town have an insurance policy that covers the pump track? Has the rider for insurance from the pump track been acquired? Have you even inquired about the cost? If you have, I'd like to see that correspond. Well, the, the mayor did open up the position, the type, the, uh, the issue of the pump track to the public. Please continue. Okay. I'd also like to see the correspondence with the town and the risk manager who allegedly said Mondamum Road was not covered. I'd like to see a more detailed bills list like we used to have, because many of the things are not even recognizable. One thing that I find to be quite disturbing is an expenditure of $695 for new members for the rec board. I'm wondering what on earth that could possibly be. Um, the other thing that's very disturbing is the town center trail feasibility study. We just pushed $1 million for a trail and pump track down residents' throats. The ink is not even dry on that paper. And now some of you are pushing to spend $38,000 to, to study a new trail. Um, we are paying an exorbitant amount of money to our consultants, particularly for studies that have been done over and over and over again for the town center, the trail, the bike path, and so on. Um, Corey Stoner alone was paid more than $54,000 for consulting fees for the pump track and the trail. Those numbers come right out of the open space fund ledger if you want to check them yourself. It seems that we have gone back to the late 1990s and early 2000, up until 2010, where we're just spending money hand over foot for um, consulting fees. Now, that's about all I have. I'm not going to really address farmland preservation, except to say once again, why do we need more money for consultants to create this, why redo it? Do we have new farms in town? Has something changed? Why do we have to spend so much money for these studies all the time? Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I was chastised in a call and in a text message recently because my, they felt that I didn't take the opportunity to change any misconception brought up by the taxpayer if I knew there was a problem. And I, I think this is an opportunity that I should, regardless of my feelings, uh, clear up is that resolution 22-216 is a chapter 159 resolution. This is not an expenditure. This is a receipt of a potential grant that was not figured in to our revenue portion of our budget. So unless council approved this form of revenue and gave it a spot, so to speak, we would not be able to accept it. Now, that's all I'm going to go, as far as I'm going to go on that at this moment, but it was just something I thought I should uh, 
make clear. Is there anyone else? Uh, yes, Rob Anzalidia. Rob Anza. Anzalo Anzalodi. I'm probably really okay. missing that up. Mr. Anzalodi with, uh, you know, extreme forgiveness if the name is wrong, but I have Rizzuto, which is pronounced any other name. Oh my, oh my goodness. Wow. Did the, you butchered my name, but that's all good. Uh, I know Ryan McGee brought up my name. I just wanted to touch base with the council. Uh, my name's Rob Anzalotti. I am uh, retired wow. recently as the chief of detectives from the Burton County Prosecutor's Office. I am part of Indovita and their application to your town for the resolution um, for the cannabis uh, dispensary on, on uh, the property in question. Just wanted to touch base real quick. I'm so sorry I couldn't be there personally to be in front of you all. Does anyone have any questions as to the security uh, aspect of what we're doing at that property if we were so blessed to get your support? Does anybody have any questions for this? I have none. No, none. No, thank you. Thank you. Great. I just wanted to make sure that you all knew I was here uh, and I, I so support the team and thank you so much for our consideration. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Um, I do not see any other hands. Okay. Seeing no one coming forward and no further hands from the skyboxes, I ask for a motion to close the floor to the public. I'll make that motion, Council motion President. By Mr. Lynch, is there a second? I'll second the motion. Second by Mr. Shortway. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Consent agenda. Resolution 22 208 through resolution 22 18. We can take these individually or we can take them in mass. And if you have any particular resolutions you would like separated, please let me know and we can separate them. Council President, I'd like to remove. Uh, resolution 22208209 and uh, resolution 216. Okay. Resolution 216. Got mine, Brian. Okay. Yeah. Are there any other? No, that's. I agree. I agree. So, with the exception of resolutions 22 208, 22 209, and resolution 22 216. I'll proceed with the consent agenda. Resolution 22-210, resolution authorizing fireworks should be displayed on August 20, sorry, October 28, 2022 within the Township of Vernon. Resolution 22-211, refund of overpayment, block 526, lot 183, Malcolm Rogowski. Resolution 22-212, refund overpayment, Block 197, Lot 30, Town Title Agency, LLC. Resolution 22-213, refund overpayment, various blocks and lots, Mark and Anime Zaremba. Resolution 22-214, refund overpayment, Block 234, Lot 62, Loretta. Resolution 22-215, authorizing the collective bargaining agreement with American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees and Vernon Township. Resolution 22-217, authorizing the award of a required disclosure contract with Granicus for compliance software. And resolution 22 Dash 218, a resolution opposing, opposing the proposed increases to the state health benefits program. May I have those, may I have a motion to place those cited resolutions on the floor for consideration? I'll make a motion. Motion made by Mr. Fury. Is there a second? Seconded by Mrs. Bucciri. Is any question on any of these? That, not, if not, I'll ask for a roll call vote, please. Sure. Vice President Bruchery? Yes. Council Member Fury? Yes. Council Member Lynch? Yes. Council Member Shortway? Yes. Council President Rizzuto? Yes. Motion carries. All the affirmative, they pass. Um, we'll start with resolution 22 208, the resolution of the Township Council of the Township of Vernon, 
in support of an adult use cannabis retailer license for Indovita LLC. May I have a motion to post this? I'll make it on the floor. I'll make a motion. Motion made by Mr. Fury. Is there a second? A second. Second by Mr. Shortway. Uh, are there any comments? Yeah, I, I, I want to make a Please. comment. Um, one of the things I, I wanted to uh, recognize Council Member Brian Lynch for when we had a lot of discussions about uh, cannabis and what to do with the revenue. I think uh, Brian had a, a, um, a fantastic idea when he proposed to using some of the uh, revenues uh, the, in, to put towards um, uh, infrastructure, in particular the roads. I thought it was an, I thought it was an excellent idea that that we should. I would like to consider because that's not in the, in the current ordinance. You know, we'd like to use that revenue for um, for road uh, either construction or repairs or maintenance. Um, I, I've heard a lot of um, people talk about uh, the road conditions, and I think it's important that we we, we address those roads. I think it's a, a great way to uh, a revenue source to to do that. The other item I wanted to uh, propose. Um, was possibly using the revenue, uh, that revenue source to offset some of the uh, um, steward debt that's running upon us in 2023, which I like to call the, the the debt train, which is coming towards us pretty pretty quickly, and um, and and to have the council maybe consider some of the revenue to uh, pay down the uh, uh, the debt, the, the enormous debt that we have coming in 2023 to the tune of about five hundred thousand um, dollars, and to uh, avoid um, the uh, what we don't want is the collapse of the MUA and, and make it go bankrupt. So I think I I like to you know at least talk about it and get the, get the conversation started. And hopefully the council might may may eventually want to you know consider that. So this is just an idea. That's that's what I wanted. To, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Mr. Shortwood. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I agree with what Mike said. I think. Brian's idea about a percentage going to roads is absolutely a fantastic idea. We did something similar to this with the hotel occupancy tax, where that money is being put aside when we have to replace the fields again in 10 years. We're back in the, in the market for grants because 1% also goes to open space. So instead of raising property taxes, if we need it for debt or continued road improvements, wouldn't it be better off to find an additional revenue stream other than always going to the property taxpayer. This would be a commercial tax on it. At this location, we previously approved it as a, a location. I think that's significant that we've done that already. In addition, I know Mr. Lynch, myself, Mr. Fury, we have been in the affirmative of the most recent cultivation dispensary uh, resolutions and uh, ordinance. I know uh, 2201, I did oppose that dispensary only because of the location. I just think this is a, a great opportunity to show that Vernon is business friendly. This is a business I know Mr. Lynch, uh, I mean Mr. Rizzuto and Ms. Bucheri, I know personally you oppose the cannabis but I think the greater picture, because 70% of the people wanted us to legalize, voted to legalize. There is a loud minority against this, but the vast majority are silent, but they made their voices heard at the ballot box, and that's where it counts. So I hate to pass up this opportunity, this commercial venture for additional revenue to help with our roads, to help with the raise in the, the bonds, and I think that's for about eight years. For the SCUMA bonds, they jump from 1 million to 1.5 million next year. I don't think the answer is to use the fund balance that we built or the net position that the MUA built. They took in the last two or three years from $47,000. I think they're well over 600,000. In 2016, I think our fund balance was 1.1. We raised that to 6 million. And if we have to look to support these bonds by going into these lack of a better term surplus, I think it's better to find these revenue streams. And if you want to call it a syntax like we have on, the state has on alcohol and tobacco, that's a way we can look at this and use that money. Again, Brian says the roads, the bond issue is, is, is a major, that we join together 
if we don't approve this, we're saying no to all dispensaries coming. This company, and I've done my own research, they're legit. They have 50 years, their family has a 50 year history of contribution, donation to community projects at all levels. I think we should welcome them. This is an upcoming business. We see it coming. And even I've had reservations about the legal as I made marijuana as a former narcotics officer. But those more learned than I am and experts approve this. And it is the medical field. Uh, a lot of our veterans use the product. A lot of our people here are using it, whether it's legal or illegal, illegal now. I just think it's the right thing to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shortwood. Any other comment? You have a roll call, please. Yes. Vice President Boucheri. No. Council Member Fury. Yes. Council Member Lynch. No. Council Member Shortway. Yes. Council President Rizzuto. No. Motion fails. Moving on. Resolution 22-209, resolution authorizing a grant applications to the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs for firefighting. May I have a motion to place this on the floor for consideration? I'll make that motion. Motion made by Mr. Shortwood. I'll second it. Seconded by Mr. Fury. Uh, questions on this? I have uh, I have to recuse myself from voting on this because I am a firefighter. And I I need to make a comment before. Um, uh, at the last meeting, I had made comments that this grant was given to us uh, 11 days before it was due. Uh, in error, I did not notice an email that I received earlier in June uh, providing us with this grant ahead of time. So my comments were made in error and uh, that I'd like to apologize for. Thank you. Any other comment? This is for $75,000 for gear, correct? Yep. Much needed. Thank you. Yeah. May I have a roll call, please? Yes. Vice President Boucheri? Yes. Council Member Fury? Yes. Council Member Lynch? I abstain. Council Member Shortway? Yes. Council President Rizzuto? Yes. Motion carries. And finally, resolution 22 216, resolution chapter 159, resolution requesting approval of revenue and appropriation amending the 20. 22 budget as a revenue and appropriation uh, of, of $38,000. Would anyone here to place this on the floor for consideration? I'll make a motion. Motion made by Mr. Fury. Fury. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Seconded by Mr. Shortway. Anybody wishing to address this? Um, I do have a couple comments. I'm glad. Um that we were able to see the supporting documentation. I think going forward, it would be helpful to have that so we could understand better, um, you know, the, the plan, the target dates. Um, I did question the dates of 2021 and, and um, did receive the response that those are flexible. So um, thank you for clarifying that. I think it was Chuck that responded to me. Um, I, I just have a hard time supporting a feasibility study for a potential project that I wouldn't support. Um, we, you know, we've we've talked about continuing trails in our towns. We talked about the expense of those trails. We've, I've been vocal about not supporting that. So I, I just have a hard time getting behind it. You know, it's free money. Why wouldn't you take, I've heard people say, why don't, wouldn't you take free money? Well, if I'm, if I have no intention of supporting continued trails, why would I want to pay even though it's technically not Vernon's money, this grant money comes from U.S. citizen taxpayers, and um, I don't support what what the pursuit of that would be. Um, I also wanted to know. I don't know, Mayor, you can answer this right now, or Chuck has has Jen has has Jessica started any work on this project yet? Yes, she has started. So. And this was done in anticipation of, of this, this. Yes. So now if we don't approve this, we have a bill yet? I don't know. She was here today, but I don't think she dropped off a bill. 
She typically doesn't bill to let. She's a little. But busy. she's done work. Right. She started. I don't know the scope of started. how far she started. Like has she? Yeah, I don't know. One there two in people. or half done or what? Yeah, I don't. I don't. The two people who who are going to be doing the work on the study. That's uh, uh, Jessica, our planner, and Corey Stoner, our engineer. And I know that Jessica started her exactly where she is, you know, in it. I don't know. And the mere fact that she's, uh, again, as I explained in my in my communication to the council, um, there was flexibility in terms of when we should access that. Yeah. And while this is important, it's, it's, it's this could be a planning tool, it's not at the top of their list. Yeah. So since Jessica just started on it, she says, I'm starting on this now. So we went and access the money. That's essentially what we're doing. <clears throat> so you you've already taken the money. The, the the grant is ours. Yes, essentially what this resolution does. This resolution puts it in the budget because when the budget is passed and, it, and it's accepted by the state, uh, in order for us to add anything to the budget, yeah. we have to pass a resolution. So the money is the money is ours. We can always accept access it accept it really so essentially we've got the money we just now need to put it into the budget how about redirecting it um i mean are we is that money that grant taken with the uh with the caveat that it must be spent on a particular for this, for, for this feasibility study this is what this grant was for i believe it's specific specifically for that for a feasibility study yeah for that yeah now can we change the the focus of the feasibility study. I, uh, I, 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 my guess, best guess would be no. Don't know for sure, but when you put together a grant, you said this is what I'm going to do with it. Understand? Yeah. The Highlands Council. Right. Yeah. So I think those scopes are are pretty set in stone. Well, and I'm looking at the at the uh, Highland Council sets. Sets the, does That's the scope up. of work. No. Well, they said the scope of work, and it says the township is in the process of developing a town center walking <clears throat> biking trail to run parallel to New Jersey State Highway Route 94 through the town center area. I have no plan in supporting a walking biking trail to run parallel to all of Route 94. So I, 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 I mean, I wish we had gotten more of this information before Jessica began working on it so we could see the true scope of it. I don't feel that it's correct to, to, to receive money, grant money for something that I would have no intention of supporting. This is kind of like we both served on the Board of Education <laughs> and we, re we receive uh, grants for three years for a particular, or two years for a teacher in a particular subject matter. And at the end of that period, the grant would stop, and the question was, do we fire the teacher, or do we have to now appropriate money out of a budget and place the teacher on a tenure track? It, it seemed like we were kind of being muscled into a decision mm -hmm. that may have been nice initially, but you know, in terms of the overall budget consideration, we might have been able to do without. This, uh, is, this is not one of those kind of grants. I know the kind you're talking about, Mr. Rizzuto, uh, th this grant funds this feasibility study, then it ends. And this feasibility study will be a planning document for future mayors and councils to be able to use. They don't have to do anything with it. So this is not one of those grants where the grant gives you some kind of resource for two or three years. And then after that, you've got to decide whether or not you want to cancel the resource or whatever. I know the, the kind of grant, but this is not one of those. Well, this just does a study. Uh, if I could. I'd since I guess it's 2012, we've accepted grants from the Highlands, the water feasibility study, uh, most recently the economic sustainability study. And it's always been my position to make us following the master plan, recreation plan, et cetera, a four season community. I was also a member of the Highlands uh, area study of where to take the Highland communities. And it comes back to really tourism, four season tourism. This grant is nothing more than a study. I've taken a lot of criticism. Uh, I always cite studies from other communities, other states on the feasibility of trails. Now we have the opportunity to study our municipality. It would, I, as far as I know, the scope cannot be changed. Let's face it, Mr. Uh, Stoner and 
Jessica know perfectly well the political climate around the trail system. I'm sure they're going to operate within that $38,000. However, if when you read all the information from the Highlands, if there was a cost overrun, they will consider picking it up. Now, they've said multiple times, the Highlands Council, we are their model Highlands community. We cannot expand in some of our areas. We're all in preservation or the planning stages of the Highlands. I understand your position, but to me, grant money is like seed. You throw it out where you think you want to have growth, where you want to have direction. And I'm not so sure that continued devotion of our resources, either in financial or personnel, towards you know, walking tracks and bike paths right now is what we need. We've just completed two major projects or in the process, process of completing. And yet when I was running for office as, and I'm only speaking for myself, my other two colleagues who, who were also new to the council can speak for themselves, but I made the statement uh, that I would not countenance not one more dollar for walking trails. I think there are just other areas of this community that should de deserve attention. And I think we have a magnificent uh, state, um, you know, town park area at Maple Grange. And I think we have not expanded, have not taken advantage of what we can put there. All right. And, and I think the fact that this, that these projects, which are available uh, for people who want to actively participate in either biking or hiking or walking, that's fine. I think there are a number of, we're well suited and we're well equipped right now. But what are we giving our senior citizens? I really, what are we giving our senior citizens? We're not giving very much in comparison to what's been done. What are we giving our youth? You know, other than sports, what are we giving some of the people who would like to come out and maybe hear some concerts or something like that? We're not doing that. You know, having the, you know, the, the concerts at the flats, you know, competing with the mosquitoes sometimes, it's, it's not really great. And I think we do have an opportunity here to redirect some of our resources and I would urge council to, you know, I, I know it's difficult, but vote no on this. If only to say we are changing the direction of our interests and of our approach in terms of what we want to do for the community, for Vernon Township. Mr. Rizzuto, if I can add. Certainly. A lot of it is connecting the trails. This Grant might show it's not economic feasibly to do it. I mean, you're assuming that it's going to say yes. It may turn around and say no. And as far as senior citizens, I'm one. So am I. And you are too. And I've spent the last two weeks up on the Heritage Trail that they connected from Goshen to Middletown. Many senior citizens. I have my young granddaughters walking it. It's passive recreation. Around the pump track is an ADA compliant trail. Now, maybe senior citizens, there are some that can walk a great deal, but maybe some can't. Plus, it's ADA compliant. We can push a baby stroller or a wheelchair. And I've seen that on the Heritage Trail. And when I talk to a place called Mason's at the new trailhead up in Minisink, it's not the actual town, but it's right outside. And business has increased. So the feasibility study will either go one way or the other. Maybe this, with the master plan, and the other plans we've done over the years, this will be the most dated, and it's just a roadmap, either yes or no. Do we go forward? And, and you know how long it takes to do any kind of trail, right? That's been seven years. No. So it could be 10 or 20 years before yeah. this is even considered again. But it's money being given to us. Why would we say no to have our planner and engineer look at this and study this? Yeah, I had. Right. Can I, can I say Absolutely. Absolutely. The, fact that, the fact that the uh, Highlands Council is willing to give $38,000 in a grant money 
to, to, to look at, at a, a trail feasibility study has to say that there's something to it. Like they, they just don't, you know, like, you know, Harry said, they did a water feasibility study that was critical to the MUA, which was very helpful to the MUA for all the, for all planning purposes. This is the same thing. You know, you know, this, you need, you need to do feasibility studies to see if it's actually, fe if it's going to work or not. And, and like, like Harry says, they, they may go through this feasibility study and say it's economically, it's, it's not going to work. I, you don't know what's, what's, what it's going to say, yes or no. But I can tell you this, throughout New Jersey, there is a tremendous movement towards building a greenways and to connect these things. They're connecting them to rail systems. They're to connecting. They're, they're, there's, these are, I mean, it's happening. So the fact that the Highlands Council is willing to do this, they must say something about Vernon that they're saying they see the potential of Vernon. So that's, that's what I just want to say that. I hear you. What would be the, what would be the potential or the possibility rather of, Approaching the Highlands Council and asking them to redirect resources. And I, I think they're 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 open. we've we've approached them in the past and 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 convinced so why them. why take this money which I I think would be oh. you know rather cavalier if you know I'm going to spend it but then we're not going to do it because I, as Mrs. Bucciri and I can't speak for Mr. Lynch but for the two of us I, I wouldn't support the issues. So. If you ever gone to a Highlands Council meeting. And then where towns are trying to get money, they are clawing for money. And you have to go there, speak up and say, this is what we need. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll listen. I, I think, you know, they're very open to listening and to, and to say, yeah, you, you have this need for a water feasibility study. This is the reason why you need it. And it's going to help you with your planning. They're, they're going to support it. Well, you, yeah. have, you have to go there and speak up. There, there were definitely some good, you know, there's the, the stormwater management plan. I think that was, right. that's wonderful for our town to have that. The um, the farmland preservation plan. I'm not if, like uh, Mrs. Pelladini said. I'm not sure if there's any new farms in here, but I I understand that. Um, I, you know, I'm not saying that they don't have good grants available or that it's not an opportunity. I just knowing how I feel, I I've stated it. I. Can I? Is there anyone else? Yeah. Council President, I point out something. Sorry. Is that, um, Go ahead, Mr. Wolf. And maybe the um, uh, mayor had had uh, didn't want to mention this, but uh, I know in the past, I would say year and a half, we've had two of the largest businessmen in town in terms of uh, what they do, and that is Mr. Hessian and Mr. Mulvihill that have come to administration and say that they support the idea of the trails. As a matter of fact, Mr. Mulvihill said he'd like it to go all the way to Kistrel Springs at some time in the distant future. That being said is they, they think the idea has value to their businesses in town. Um, and I think there's a possibility that they might even assist uh, with some financial ends if at some point in time. But just remember, as far as the building, even if Vernon does not want to spend any tax dollars, and I understand that perfectly, that there are grants there that we have applied for, haven't been successful yet, but we will probably continue to do that. That will help us uh, with possibly doing this if a feasibility study says that it would be a good idea. But knowing that two of the main business, two very successful businessmen in town have asked administration to uh, consider continuing on down the, down the uh, trail, so to speak, to get it to, past their, their particular locations. And just to add to that, and I think it's a good point, is that um, as you build it and you, and, you, and, you, and we've built the trail, once they see that, like when we tried to access grants previously with the Greenway Committee, we had a difficult time because we didn't have a, a project ready to go. Now they, when they see this, when they see the trail bill, they're, they're probably more open, especially the DOT, of, of, of giving out grants to to extend it and then continue it down towards Mountain Creek. So it's strange. Can I, I got one question and I'm not as learned as most of my colleagues and my scribe uh, over here. Why do we get a feasibility study when it's almost done? This is not a feasibility. The, the comment about our current trail was just comments in there. The, the feasibility study is for the possibility of extending trails throughout Vernon, where they would go, what it would cost, 
what's the positive, negative related? Nobody to figured that out before they got started in the first place. But that's, it's not related to the trails that we have now. Okay, it's it's just really a planning tool, and it's a it, it's 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 grant money for a planning tool, uh, not necessarily just for this council, uh, and maybe maybe not the next two or three. It's a document that we can have this this done. So I understand the council president uh, has has put forth his opinion about this. Future councils might feel different. Future mayors might feel different. But we'll have this, this tool here. We'll have somebody who's already studied this. Somebody who's already done it. That, that's all this is. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a possible planning tool. So I don't know why we would not accept the grant money. We've already accepted. Why, you know, why we would not use the grant money to get this study done. You know, it, it can, it's, if, if you want it to sit on the shelf, because of the fact that you are not in favor of it, that's good. Uh, uh, the, the existing council or existing mayor might not be in favor, of it, but somebody might want to dust that off one day. You know, you know, we just we'll just have it. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know the wisdom of not necessarily. In South, uh, our county down near Stanhope, they are looking at a couple of million dollars in grant money to extend the trails to connect to the Liberty Trail plus money coming in to redo the two rail stations down there. Mm -hmm. And there's our own Senator Orho, Assemblyman Worth, and Parker Spathel. Space are also on board with this, and they have to get some of the other federal officers involved because there's so much money out there, and we saw this during COVID. So we're close to home. We see there's going to be money and not coming out of our taxpayers, but I think we need that study. If it says, yes, connect, and it's about connecting the present trails. Right? How do you get the Appalachian, someone on the Appalachian, to be able to walk? Because you know, 94 and 517 are the best streets to walk on, right? But if you do trails and there's a lot of state property in there, and you might have to get some easements through, like he Heaven Hill, that would look at where's the best way to go it. Well, what's the economics? That's why I think the economic sustainability plan was so important. Where to go? So how do we do it? And that's I think it's just a roadmap how we do it. If future councils, mayors decide to do it. I right now, I know that. we don't have the support yeah. to do it, but we don't know where we'll be in five, seven, or eight years. That's right. I know. I understand that. I don't, I, you know, and having more information to make decisions, I, you know, I don't disagree with that. Um, I am a little concerned, not concerned, but if just because, you know, they've already started working on it, um, I don't want the township to be on the hook for any, you know, fees, obviously, that we would owe them because they've done work in good faith and we would obviously need to to pay them whatever they've done if, if we don't accept this, so. My concern is that the township or the administration must accept the fact that there are, and I'm sorry to be so blunt, but there are three of us on here who wish to see the direction of certain recreation activities go in a different way. And that's the council's decision. And I think the fact that we would rather see perhaps greater development on an existing, I should call it amenity, such as the park, which benefits our residents alone is probably more attractive to the citizens of this community than trying to put together some type of a system that brings together residents who choose to tr travel through or come here from someplace else, All right? Those are not, uh, quite honestly, they're not our responsibility. I understand the, the necessity of tourism, but I don't see people hiking along with sticks and backpacks going into a restaurant and ordering a big dinner later on. You know, where are they gonna change, in their car? I mean, it, to me, it's, perhaps that's too flippant, but I just think that the direction that I was told when I was running was that we want more emphasis <clears throat> on our own citizenry, our youngsters who are, you know, three, four, five, 10 kids who don't want to necessarily take be part of sports, senior citizens, 
or people who would rather do something less uh, active than hiking or riding bikes on the trail. It's as simple as that. And I think that using grant money is the way you direct the township. And that's why I'm asking, is there any way of possibly using this money in some other way to redirect it? It, it does say the scope. One of the, one of the bullet points of the scope does say connectivity to amenities such as amphitheater, pump track, downtown commercial areas, and then it goes on to hotels and active. So they're- Yeah, they think that was written by somebody here. Okay, so did did someone on in, in your um, team write this, Howard, or was this from the Highlands? What are you What are you, you looking at, Pete? I'm looking at the first page of the Highlands Master Plan Conformance for the Town Center Trail Feasibility Study. It details the scope of work and then the study scope, and there's bullet points. I that, think that's the Highlands Council. That might have come from their economics, may have, I don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. Their economic sustainability study that they did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Previous EDAC, when they took the survey. So, by the way, just if I just said, Mr. Rizzuto, I've asked for a amphitheater mm -hmm. since I became mayor in 2016. I've never been able to gain support. Well, I I'm asked with you 100%. I've asked for one previously. Write, write the and, date down, Mike. And the place <laughs> that had the difference is it doesn't belong here. I think it belongs at the Maple Grange Park. And I made my position known on that as well. Maybe during their study, if we approve this, they could study where you put the amphitheater. Right. That's well, why does, I want that. that. That's why that's why I would like to have a redirection Are we, of some of our resources to perhaps well, that's, have that. Are we, right there in the scope. If it's within the scope, are we able to direct our professionals, Corey and Jessica, to focus on some that type of aspect more. I, I know, focus that information there. I, I think you could if it's in, if it's in the scope it's in the of scope. work, right? If it's in the scope of work, it's it's a very open ended scope of work. It, you could direct your professionals you any, any way you want to. <laughs> I mean, they the Highlands has been great to work with. Oh yeah, they are. They really have, and it, since it's in the scope, administration would be kind enough and. If the council agrees, well, why don't we contact them and it, answer that question? It, it okay. does say right. Why, why won't we try to do that? Want to play? You want to table this once again and find out? I'd like to take the money and start the study after we get that. But I mean, if you want to table it, but I just see thirty-eight thousand dollars to study the fees. I, I know, I know. I see the money, I and you just brought up a good point. The work has started. I, and that, you know, I mean, I, that, that was a great say, point. You I just don't made. want to, you know, I, I don't want to put the taxpayer on the hook for something. And I obviously we need to. Mm -hmm. You know, so can I, can I, actually, I don't mind tabling it. Um, I have tentatively scheduled a meeting uh, with the municipal liaison from the Highlands Council for that their request that they come to Vernon. They would like to see what some of what's going on here. September 14th. September 14th. And part of the discussion will be at that time uh, some of the concerns that we have about uh, the lake communities and some of the um, problems they're having with the algae blooms and some other issues related to stormwater. Um, so I was gonna invite some of the, uh, not all of them, but some of the uh, uh, leaders of those lake communities here to discuss that as well. But obviously the, the topic and the agenda is, is quite open. Okay. Anybody else? I'll move the question, thank you. Call for a roll call. So we're not going to table this. We're going to vote on it now. Can we well, take? we open discussion. We well, um, there's a, I need a motion to table. I'd like to table it. I'll make a motion to table it. Motion has been made. Can I have a roll call vote on the motion to table? I need a second. Need a second. second, please. Is there I'm going to second it. Second it, Mr. Fury. Does the public have a comment? At public Maybe comment time, you can. Yep. Thank you. Roll call. Vice President Boucheri? Yes. Council Member Fury? Yes. Council Member Lynch? No. Council Member Shortway? Yes. Council President Rizzuto? No. Motion carries to table. Thank you. Okay. We'll pick this up after the uh, After the. If we get some information back from. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't see a deadline on this. Is, is no. there a deadline? So can we? So, so we're okay with it. Yeah, we can. Add, we can tell our professionals to hit the pause button for now. Uh, I, I don't know. Probably not. I'm not so sure what we're tabling it for. What do you want me to? I'm not so sure what 
the, the grant is what the grant is for. I'm not really so sure. Can you tell me what what are we tabling for? What what does the council want me to do? See if we can I, redirect that money to someplace else. Okay. I'll I'll ask I'll ask them if we can redirect the money. If they said no, I'll come back to you. Okay, okay. thank right. you. As a secondary question, can we ask them to study the feasibility of where to place the amphitheater? In relation to connectivity to trails. With if the we trails. do that. Can we do that? Kind of take the thing. Okay. Sure, go ahead. So that would be additionally with the connection of the trails, where would be the best opportunity for the amphitheater to go? Maple Grange or some other location? Well, that would be in the in the scope of so we might have to, you know, I, 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 that, that, that would be I also, part of the but I also so, think as part of that discussion. I mean, we had had this discussion earlier, many years ago. One of the concerns was brought up, uh, whether it was fabricated or not, was parking. But where there's there's still undeveloped property on in the mm -hmm. Maple Grange area, yeah. and parking is one of the least expensive areas to develop. Just grade it, clean it up, you can park. But as far as where I think the amphitheater should, I'm sorry, the windshell could go would be there be, simply because of the noise uh, reduction and 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 the 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 ambience and the fact that you have a uh, no interruption from surrounding traffic that you might have uh, along the 94 corridor or some of these walking paths. And so, okay, we can talk about that at another time. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. Thanks. Introduction of Ordinance 22 16. Uh, Ordinance of no, the Township. I'm sorry, with threats out. Public hearing, second heat reading on Ordinance 22 15, an ordinance of the Township of Vernon, County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, amending and supplementing Chapter 5 of the Municipal Code, Township of Vernon. Can we have a motion to open this? To um, I'll make a motion. Place this on the floor for the public. Motion made by Mrs. McSherry, is there a second? I'll second it. Seconded by Mr. Shortway. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. The issue is open for consideration by the comment by the public. Anybody wishing to comment on this item and this item only may approach the podium or Give us your comment from Skyboxes. Is there anyone here wishing to address the council? By the way, just to clarify, the issue here is the bringing the number of minutes that a council that the meeting is open to the public from three to five, so that's in accord in accordance with past practice. Is there anyone else? I have um, Rick Carson. Mr. Carson. Mr. Carson. Yes, uh, that must have been a mistake. I do not have any questions for you. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? I don't have any hands up. Okay, we have a roll call, please. I'm sorry, may I have a motion to close the meeting to the public? Sorry. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Mr. Lynch. I'll second second it. Seconded by Mrs. Bucciri. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any comments from the council? No. The, the only thing I'll say is the part that I object to this ordinance is under D2. When you're limiting the number of video conferences that a council person can attend. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Oh, roll call, please. Vice President Bouchery? Yes. Council Member Fury? No. Council Member Lynch? Yes. Council Member Shortway? No. Council President Rizzuto? Yes. Motion carries.
I have a motion to open the meeting to public comment. I'll make that I'll motion, motion, Council President. Motion made by Mr. Lynch. I'll second it. Seconded by Mrs. Bucciri. I have a all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Meeting is open to the public for comment on any issue for five minutes. Please step to the podium and give us your name. And Hi, my name is Camilla Duressa. I so I walked the stairway to heaven very recently and I got lost trying to find the peak up there. So it's just weird if we're getting money to get a study on our trails, why not explore it, it, it just like the blue paint, you can't really see where you're going up there or where you're walking to. I, I'm just gonna start, that's that's managed by the Appalachian Trail Conservatory. Okay, so, so what is the grant? Be able to, um, we wouldn't be able to, I think, do anything about that. It's, we're not responsible for that. Yeah, we're not responsible for that trail. That's by the Appalachian Trail Conservatory. Okay. Um, so this is just studying trails in Vernon proper. In Vernon, okay. So I picked up hitchhikers from, from the AT that are trying to go get Chinese food. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> like, I know we don't have sidewalks, so it is kind of a good thing for senior citizens, for our youth to have like a map to see where they can walk to. They don't need a car. I don't know. That's just what I'm thinking. It, and it's a if it's a grant, it's just a study to figure out where we can make our trails better, which would benefit, I think, everybody. So that's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you. Hi guys, how's it going? My name is Jocko McMillan. Many people know me as Trail King. In 1996, I began riding BMX bikes at the age of nine. In 2008, I got introduced into pump tracks for the first time. This had really attracted me because the melting pot community that had been centered around this pump track was truly amazing. I saw kids as young as five years old and with riding with their parents and even grandparents as old as 60. This was amazing community that brought so many people together. It brought youth. It brought even old people who could come and enjoy this community and see their grandkids and how much they had fun. So that had inspired me to continue that. And so because of the skill set that the pump track gives you, it is a basic skill set for all bike riding. So for me, it inspired me to continue my dream of being a professional BMX racer. In 2012, I had the wonderful opportunity to compete for the USA Olympic trials for BMX racing. This was an amazing opportunity that I had taken all because of pump track. It had opened the door of limitless opportunities for me. After retirement, I decided that I was gonna take everything I have learned, the skills, the diet, the nutrition, and I was also gonna focus on the mindset and the mentality that it takes to be successful at riding bicycles and riding pump tracks. I was gonna take that mentality and give it to the youth and a generation of kids that will rise up and be able to drive the sport that I love so much. In 2018, I moved to New York City, and I had the opportunity to work for the Brooklyn Pump Track, the first asphalt pump track in USA. This was a flagship pump track made by Bella Solutions that brought so many people. I managed that park for two years. It was privately owned, 
And we were really able to have kids as young as three years old on little strider bikes that they can push with their feet. Wow, this is truly something that was so amazing. 2020, COVID happened. Boom, my life turned upside down and the door opened up for me to get into mountain biking. Living in New York City and being in the mountain biking, I always looked at Mountain Creek. Mountain Creek is a pinnacle of downhill mountain biking. It has been since the year 2000 and even before that, mid to late 90s. When I came to Mountain Creek Pump Track, I fell in love with that place. And when I went to Ride to Ridetopia, that was managed by the late Jason Rinker and his community that was ran out of that bike shop, I was totally floored by. They opened even more doors for me to learn how to ride, to give me the right connections, to meet the right companies, to be now a successful downhill racer. I still love pump tracks, and it is an amazing opportunity that this pump track is here in Vernon. I tell you right now that you have no idea the friendships and the community and the brothership that goes on every day in this town on Mountain Creek. But the issue is there is a gap between the youth getting into that sport due to money and due to resources. So I applaud all you guys for allowing this pump track to happen. We know there was a lot of controversy going around this, but still there was unity that this thing is physically built at this time, although not open to the public. And it is even more significant that each and every one of you are sitting here today. It has been what? Over two and a half years since you all have been here. Look how many people we have present here now. This is probably a lot since you've seen since COVID. I know I've been here more than a handful of times and there has been almost nobody. So even though there might be some individuals that are paid to be here, we thank you all for coming and thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Very well, thank you. My name is Jeff Hoffman. I'm a resident of Vernon for about five years now. Um, I just want to say that this pump track is something that you guys uh, well, want to start by saying thank you for uh, allowing me to be here. But this is something that is really going to bring a lot of people together. I'm originally from Central Jersey. I literally moved up to this area for outdoor recreation. I mean, I travel. I actually went further um, further from my job. I used to commute to New York City, to Staten Island, to um, parts of all the five boroughs. And I literally made it harder on myself for this, you know, a love of outdoor sports. So, uh, as Josh alluded to, um, Mountain Creek has a community that's kind of unrivaled in the mountain bike industry. Um, it's actually, you know, very well renowned in the United States. People from racers from all over the country know about Vernon, New Jersey. It's kind of bizarre. Um, but now that we're allowing this pump track to be part of the community, it's you're going to see a lot more people coming to this area just to experience this. I mean, you may see people move here like I did, but it's it's gonna be something that's good. I mean, I traveled to other towns, other um, states even to go do this type of stuff. And you should see the money that is brought to these towns. It's absurd. I mean, I you know, it's, it's kind of, we talk about it a lot. When I see there's a community at Mount Creek, we talk about this and it's kind of sad to see that these things are not offered here. It's not really accepted when you we have it you know, it, it's such, such an abundance for us to, to use. So uh, thank you. Bye, well, thank you. Is there anyone else? <laughs> yes, I have Doreen Edwards. Ms. Edwards? Yes, thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to mention, I might be a little naive because I haven't always been listening to the, to the meetings as of late and, uh, Actually, for the last uh, few years, um, but I miss the days when I used to be able to run to RJ Mars and pick up a nice <laughs> gift for um, a wedding anniversary or a birthday. Um, I drive down Route 515 and I look to the left and I see that empty uh, mall there. That's what's sad. I drive and I make a left from uh, 515 to go behind the firehouse. And there's nothing on that um, whole span of area. That's what's sad. I mean, I know you guys are doing a lot for the pump station, for outdoor recreation. But what about our town center? It's been so long and it's so sad. I know COVID put a, a monkey wrench into things. But even before that, we 
we haven't really addressed that whole issue. And I know it's a water issue, but I really would like to see us get back to something on our town center. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Well, let me just address your comments briefly. You're, you're right, you're quite right. But what a township can do in attracting businesses, we can't say we won't only want this or only want that. I, I think our, our market is dependent upon what the entrepreneur field can grow, can prosper, and where he's willing to put his capital. And so we become responsive to, or that person becomes responsive to what fears how we can satisfy particular needs. I think what we as a town can do is provide a solid infrastructure and a tax base that makes it attractive for that individual who wishes to open a business to prosper and give him some support. And what's happening now is I believe we are beginning to prepare for uh, our, to, to resolve part of this water issue. It's going to have to be taken in stages because of the expense. Am I not correct, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Thank you. And I think part of that, uh, you know, is being done because of the uh, finances received through the American Rescue Plan, which has been dedicated to that particular area. So uh, we're, we're not without thinking of this. We're just, you know, working on it. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Jessica Palladini. This is Palladini. Hello again. Um, the consultants are running the show and starting work before the council even approved the grant. That is just outrageous, but I will reserve further comment to the next meeting. I'm speaking tonight about Township Clerk Mar Marcy Giantasio. You were so quick to praise her at the last meeting while some of you said she did nothing wrong. It was just a personal Oprah, you claimed. <clears throat> we now know that she sent her Oprah request to Montvale Police during her workday in Vernon. Page 10 of the employee handbook even restricts employees from accessing or using township communication media for personal purposes during company time page 10 of the employee handbook, if you wanna check it. She sent the request at 11.43 a.m. on Wednesday, January 26th, on a work day while she was at work. She also got the Oprah response back on a work day, Friday, February 4th at 2.44 p.m. while she was at work. And now look. Her actions as a political operative got all of you named and involved in a lawsuit, <clears throat> including the clerk. As I understand, the sheriff's department served it today. And how much will this lawsuit cost the taxpayer? She acted as a political operative and you did nothing to protect citizens of this town from her actions. If she did this to one, she will do it to any citizen in Vernon Township. No, please do not say she did nothing wrong. She did so many things wrong. And we'll see as this lawsuit bears out. Marcy Giantasio needs to resign today. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, John Hansen. Mr. Hansen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to uh, lightly speak about myself and the Vernon cycling community that I am trying to gather uh, as we have this pump track coming to a near end and hopefully for a beautiful opening, uh, grand opening. A uh, brief history of myself. I'm a I'm Verdant resident that moved here when I was four years old. Um, 
And I had a hard time growing up in Vernon as it was a very stick and spall uh, sport, um, making me feel outcasted and hanging out, let's say, with not the greatest people at times as I did not fit in. I wish there was something like this at that time, like of a pump track, but um, very happy to see it now. Um, it wasn't until I was 17 and I had a neighbor that basically made a payment plan with me for a downhill mountain bike, which can be extremely expensive to getting into the sport where a pump track, you can use any bike. Um, from there, I met Jason Rinker, who saw I had drive and talent and then helped me pursue my career for where I raced as a professional downhill mountain biker for many years. And a later part of my career, Jason and I teamed up together to help get the youth into it uh, more. He supported a youth development team that I was behind of with supporting from Kathy Krause. Um, we're trying to get more youth into the sport here. And I would love to see those kids that I knew there was many kids that I tried to help guide them, but couldn't afford money. I mean, couldn't afford the bikes and I could see them possibly going down the wrong route. Some of them I know have because they didn't have an easier access to a sport like this. So I'm fully supporting a pump track, you know, of being coming my key role. I would love to play into this is not to be debating about the location and land and where it should be as it's already been built. It would cost the taxpayer way more money to start fresh again. We should just keep the, the balls already got too much momentum, but what we can do is guide it and make sure it has <clears throat> the right. It's on the right track. With that being said, from being a bike park instructor, doing youth development camps, educating the kids how to ride it, making sure we're minimizing injuries, expressing how they should be wearing helmets, inspecting their bikes, things of that matter. That's the role I want to play. I would love to be a role model for these kids coming up, just like my friend Josh has. You know, I would continue to love to be part of this community and I would love to see that grant money even be pushed because I can tell you I've had also some pretty scary experiences riding my bike throughout town on the new shoulders that we have instead of having a designated path. And I've traveled all throughout the U S seeing beautiful bike paths as I've been down in Austin, Texas earlier this spring where I just came back from racing um, the Enduro World Series, placing second this past weekend in that race series, um, and up in a beautiful mountain bike community town called Burke, Vermont, that has access bike paths everywhere, and then also being up in Sugarloaf, Maine. So I continue to want to see uh, the grant money being pushed forwards towards bike paths. I think it's something that we need to capitalize, seeing that Mountain Creek is one of the most recon uh, recognized names in mountain bike parks here in the US. And we should really play into what we have already here because it will only help grow the business. Because I can tell you from the Port Jervis Pump Track Day, when it first opened, all me and my friends, the first thing we did afterwards after riding the pump track is we went to that local brewery in town and ever since then, it's a tradition for me going to that local brewery after riding at the pump track and getting some their famous uh, Buffalo Brussels Buffalo Brussels sprouts. And I would know everyone would support local communities around here and restaurants. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else? Yes, I have Bill. Bill. Once again, gentlemen and ladies, you disappoint me. You know that we need the money. And, and, and again, you, you vote against the, uh, the cannabis. I don't understand. 70% of the, of the population voted for cannabis in Vernon. 
you guys won your seats with 20% of the vote. Good night. Good night. Is there anyone else? Uh, yes, I have Martin O'Donnell. Mr. O'Donnell. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I'm speaking here as a community member and my statements are my personal views and not that of any organization that I'm affiliated with. Um, I'd like to speak about the events at the council meeting in July. As the mayor was speaking, he was rudely interrupted by council president Rizzuto in an attempt to squelch him. This was followed by a walkout, which began with Mr. Carey, followed by Mr. Rizzuto, and then by Mr. Lynch. The reasoning for this is beyond my comprehension. This was the most unprofessional childish act that I've ever seen from any local politicians. This display of immaturity was synonymous with a child taking his ball and going home because he didn't get his way. A child flipping the Monopoly board because he is losing, or for those of you who remember Nintendo, a child hitting the reset button in the middle of a game that wasn't going their way. The operative word here being child. It seemed quite obvious that this act was premeditated and planned. This makes it even worse. That being said, all three of you violated the Open Public's Meeting Act by congregating as a council majority group outside the public meeting, all while neglecting to close the meeting out properly. Ms. Bucari, it seemed to have started with you. Why, I'm not sure. I've seen you before in a very professional manner. In fact, I voted for you because I thought you would bring this level of professionalism to our town council. My hope is that you got caught up in the middle of all this, all this and will return to being an independent thinker. Mr. Rizzuto, I heard you in one of the council meetings proclaim yourself as a town CEO. That could not be farther from the truth for many reasons, not to mention that you don't act like a CEO. Let me remind you that in our form of government, the executive power in the township is exercised by the mayor. Again, oh, sorry. You, Mr. Rizzuto, are a narcissist and a huge, with a new, huge Napoleon complex. You're one that believes he is a dictator and one that has vindictive agenda. This agenda will only succeed in doing two things, unraveling everything that this town has been done in this town by previous councils and impeding any chance of this town moving forward. In fact, there was an editorial written to the, Her to the Herald by a council person that served under you in 2015 with the same complaints. It would be great if you all stopped, started, I'm sorry, if you, it would be great if you all started thinking for yourself and stopped following the Facebook rhetoric of Pinky and the Flying Monkeys. It sometimes seems that you are their puppet, but as others have, you will soon realize that the minute you do something that is against their agenda, you too will be put out on the porch. Ask Mr. Burrell. I told him that when he took office and, and, and look where he is in their eyes now, from the best things since sliced bread to the spawn of Satan almost overnight. Look over your shoulder, Mr. Zuto, you'll be next. So in closing, I will ask you for the rest of your terms that you pivot now and think and act as individuals and put your agenda in vindictive ways in the trash. Great things get done when a board and a council knows how to disagree with each other respectfully and make productive decisions based on facts, not emotions or the inaccuracies and mis misinformation of insignificant people. I will say that you missed the boat on the cannabis thing. You have succeeded in sending money to other um, towns. Uh, Mr. Rizzuto, you completely contradicted yourself with your comment about businesses because you voted against getting one in here okay and in in addition the walking trail along 94 will do nothing but bring people into those businesses i don't know if you've ever been over by the creamery but these people come out of the woods and they get in line and they're they do a ton of business with the hikers there as well as heaven hill farms and even the hot dog guy there so i just think that you guys need to rethink these decisions and not make your decisions based on what your feelings are, but what is best for the town. Because that's what we all put you there for. So, and one more thing, if Pinky and the Flying Monkeys are gonna take quotes from my words here tonight, I ask them that they use complete thoughts and not snippets that they can spin to their own liking. Anyone who wants an actual transcript of what I said here tonight, please email me at odonald6n at yahoo.com. Thank you for your time. I feel I have to comment on that. I really do. I have spent, 15 years working for the benefit of children prior to being on the council. And I find it highly difficult to say to a child, please do not experiment with something that in my mind, whether you believe it to be correct or not, is some type of a hallucinogenic or some type of a gateway drug or whatever. But I do count myself as being fortunate to have worked with a number of great people who were able to put up high school, who were able to put up 
a middle school, elementary school, and who were able to bring into existence another elementary school. So to say that I did not, or I do not, look at the benefit of the people of Vernon, I choose to disagree with you on that very, very heavily. It's just unconscionable. And as far as my present position, it's predicated on what I've just said. Anyone else? Yes, um, Ann Larson. Ms. Larson. Good evening, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, hi. So I just have a couple things to go over. Um, earlier, I, I did come in a few minutes late this evening. I was busy with something else. But you, you were mentioning earlier on about the revenue and, and looking to divvy up the revenue from the, uh, from if we got the marijuana tax and the hotel tax and all these other B&B uh, &B tax. Um, here's the thing. I feel like when you work in percentages, that 6% is going to this and 2% is going to that, that these vague numbers are how we get into trouble. And I think we ought to stop doing that. And if you're going to allocate a sum of money, the first X amount of dollars goes to the roads. The next X amount of dollars goes to um, whatever was next on that agenda. Because these imaginary numbers that, don't, that, that are in the cloud somewhere are not concrete. And then when expenses come in, we're not... We're not spending based on those those projections. We're spending what's what's coming in before we know what we have in total. So one of the things I would propose, and I, it drives me crazy, I think the front page of the township website should have all these monthly revenue or however many, does it come in weekly, monthly, whatever it is, have it uh, tallied daily, weekly, monthly, whatever it is on the front page. So we know exactly how much money we're talking about. I mean, Mr. Fury mentioned giving you know a, a portion of it to the MUA. Again, we already got our 1.75 American Rescue. Now we're going to give another 500,000 or something, whatever he mentioned. We need to start seeing the tally uh, accumulate before we start allocating what it's going to go to, whose pet project is first. So that's one thing. The, the recreational clothing, again, the 600 and something dollars. Again, we need to have, instead of just a bills list, we would like to see the expense authorization, the purchase order, the, the competing bids for these items that are purchased, as well as the check authorization, so we know who is signing off for these things. The money is just going absurdly out the window. $625 for clothing for some people on the recreation board. This is really a, a weekly occurrence, apparently. Uh, lastly, in reference to the lawsuit that uh, that was, I guess, or mentioned earlier, I feel like uh, we, we know what was done. We know two members of the council, uh, excuse me, one member of the council and the business administrator filed internal affairs charges um, against the citizen. OK, and I know what what Marcy has been accused of doing with the emails is not appropriate. So here's the thing. Why don't we come up with either a resolution or an ordinance? Uh, effectively immediately stopping any future episodes like that okay because now this has got us down the road where we're in the middle of another lawsuit if we put a stop to that that is prohibited behavior on all parties parts at least we won't get that far with another person because i feel like okay we caught it this time we know who it was done to and by whom that this just gets worse and worse and worse if permitted. So if we have a rule or an ordinance in place that says it is absolutely prohibited for the members of the council or the business administrator to file uh, employment charges against a member of the township for a zoning issue, I think we can we can kind of like maybe tamp down some of the potential for lawsuits in this town. I don't want to keep writing checks for these for these frivolous uh, expenses that are incurred for no reason. So thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Ms. Larson. Anyone else? Um, Stephanie DeBri DeBrienza. Mrs. DeBrienza, how are you? How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. I'm sorry you had that phone call from Mr. O'Donnell, which I was a little shocked to hear, especially he is a board of education, um, sits on the board of ed. I think his actions and what he had to say was despicable. Um, so I apologize were what you went through listening to that call um you. you're welcome um you know marcy acting as a political operative resulting in this lawsuit is nauseating 
the fact that Mr. Shortway did what he did, opening the internal affairs um, investigation. We can thank you for starting that, right, Mr. Shortway? Is that what you did? I can't wait. Please address the council. Please address the you know council president, Mr. DeBriens, and not individuals. Please. Understood. Understood. Thank you. I just find it. I am blown away by the fact that we, how much money are we going to spend on this lawsuit? And you want to put and you and we we're talking about more trails. Where are we walking to? We walk into rest nice restaurants. How long has the how long has the hotel been empty? At the Appalachian, all the storefronts. Where are you going to park to go there? Oh, we can walk. Right, we can walk on our trail. Can't buy a gift for anybody in town. Just like um, the other resident had said. I'm sorry, I forgot your name. We have nothing. What are we going to have? More fast food places, pizzeria, gas stations, and banks? Because that's about it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any other hands. May I have a motion to close the? I'll make that motion. Board of the Public motion made by Mr. Lynch. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Fury. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. May I have council comments? We'll start with Mr. Fury. Me first. Thank you, Mayor, Town Council, and residents. My comments tonight are focused on one goal: to focus on the topics that Vernon wants us to continue to work on. Cannabis, as we heard tonight. Cannabis is an important issue for Vernon because it can bring potentially bring us much needed revenue. I continue to support any effort to bring business to Vernon because it is a rateable that we desperately need to lower or stabilize taxes. As I, as I spoke tonight, I want to recognize council member Brian Lynch for a suggestion to dedicate a certain percentage of revenue to the, ma the maintenance of our aging road infrastructure. I want to work with him and others on the council to possibly make that a reality. We owe this to the public that depends on these roads every day. The other infrastructure issue is our aging sewer system and looming debt, I want to officially call the debt train. The, the, this debt is coming and could potentially bankrupt the MUA, increase taxes on those on the sewer system and those who are not on the system. I, I want the council to also consider taking a percentage of cannabis revenue to pay down the enormous debt, approximately $500,000 in 2023, to, the, to our sewer bonds. I hope the council joins me in that effort and I ask town council president to consider this request. Bike parks and trails. I'm excited to announce that we're even closer to the opening of the bike track and trail system to town center. I had the honor to work with over 40 enthusiastic volunteers who this past Saturday worked half of a very hot day to move and spread mulch on the inside portion of the pump track. It was great to see the community come together, excited about a park that will bring much needed revenue to commercial businesses in Vernon Township. Kudos to them. The water projects. The water project is moving forward with the drafting of a much needed agreement with our partner, Violia Suez. I ask again for an engineer presentation that will outline the reasons for water supply in the town center, utilizing our American Rescue Plan money approved by a previous council. The water project is critical to the survival of the MUA. The sewer update. The MUA has made great progress on building a new pump station, critical to the sewer system operation. We hope to hear soon uh, with our appeal for, about SCUMA and help to help lower rates for all sewer users. I will continue to work with the MUA on this critical asset and, and look forward to the newly formed Septic Transfer Station Committee and, and I need to compliment Town Council President Rizzuto for making this a reality. In conclusion, as I continue my campaign, I ask that the public take the time and ask me the hard question and challenge me to listen and do better for you, the voter and the taxpayer. I want to convince you and to confidently say, I like Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You don't like Mike? It. You don't have to say it. <laughs> well, if you want to, go right ahead. <laughs> Getting a little close there. <laughs> Mr. Shortwood. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm very disappointed 
that the majority of the council said no to a business opportunity for this township tonight. To Marcy, I usually do not respond to the complainant. I consider her persona non grata. And remember, Marcy, this is the person who sued the town for a land use board seat that cost the taxpayers $33,000. Although I don't speak for the whole council, I consider the work you do competent, above satisfactory, and you're dependable. If I call- Excuse me. Yes. You do speak for the whole council. Thank you, Mr. Rizzuto. Don't let it bring you down. We are behind you, absolutely behind you. And to correct it, we have not proceeded to a lawsuit today. It is simply a tort claim. We don't know where this is gonna go. So it's not a lawsuit yet. And let's see if we get served by an attorney, a lawsuit. I have nothing more to say. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Short. Mr. Lynch. I have nothing. Mrs. Bashir. Thank you. Um, I, I did wanna comment um, just a little bit about, about the cannabis vote. I, you know, I, there's a lot of talk about um, tax revenue coming into our town, which is obviously important. However, the points I made about not being willing to accept potential grant, if I, if I wasn't going to pursue the avenue that that, from the direction that grant was, was pointing, it's, it's a small, um, I guess, point of, of conscience for me. And that's expressed even larger in my feeling towards retail cannabis. I'm not talking about medical. Um, that's a completely different topic. I feel strongly against it. Um, Mr. Rizzuto, Council President Rizzuto touched quickly on talking to his grandsons, warning them against drug use and then supporting um, a business that sells a drug in his town simply for tax revenue. My beliefs and values are not gonna change based on a dollar or income um, personally or as a representative. I was very vocal with my feeling on that. Um, previous council when Mr. Shirtley was council president, I'm sure he recalls I called in with my concerns. I interacted with community members and I got elected. Um, I, I didn't change my position. People knew who I was if they asked. I made, um, no <clears throat> apologies for that. I spoke to the Learning Coalition, the Center for Prevention and Counseling. In recent years, there's been a 40% increase in emergency room visits due to cannabis overdose. Not heroin, not methamphetamines, not fentanyl, cannabis overdose, 40% increase. That's significant. I don't know where that was purchased. I don't know if it was from legal retail establishments, illegal, but that's significant and it's concerning. There's a lot of other reasons I can go into. I'm not asking to change people's minds. I understand where other council members are coming from, business members, community members. I can respect that. I would just ask that you would do the same. And um, I wouldn't expect you to change your views or values I would expect you to be true to them, and I would hope that 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 would that respect would be given towards me. Um, also, I just wanted to let you know, Mayor, and I apologize. I'm just pulling up my email here. You had mentioned in your comments about the negotiations with the school board for the fuel service. Mm -hmm. Shortly after that meeting that Mr. O'Donnell referenced, he sent me an email, and I didn't realize you weren't copied on it, and neither were you, Chuck. And I apologize because it was several people in the email, and I did reach out to him but um, he did not reply to me. But he said that the liaison committee has decided not to move forward with the gasoline shared services plan. We have also decided to postpone any further shared services discussions with the town for now. I reached out to him twice to follow up and he did not respond. So I, you know, I didn't know that you didn't know that. So was, I apologize for not sharing that with you, Mayor. Was that decision made at a public meeting? Um, they, I don't know, they, he did not respond did they vote to me. At the Board of Education? I did not hear back. I called him and reached out to him on two occasions and did not hear back from him. Right. So I'm sorry you didn't know it though, because I thought you were on this, both of you. Marcy, could you please remind me to come up with some of the uh, 
communications with sure. Dr. Rogers. Yes. Great. Yep. So, um, and I let, let me just check my notes for anything else. And I do want to, I do want to um, just make note. I do appreciate all the volunteers that spent their time at the pump track. It was a really hot day on that asphalt. And although, again, I, I've made publicly that I wasn't a, a supporter of the pump track, I am a supporter of our town and time that our community members spend it and volunteers. And I really do appreciate that um, there was a group that came out and I do appreciate that spirit of community that Vernon has. Thank you. My comments will be brief. I echo Mrs. Gutierrez's uh, thanks to the people who came out and supported uh, the mayor in working at the pump track. I've had individual conversations with the mayor and I think while we may disagree, it's not necessarily on the existence of that particular amenity, but precisely where. And however, I am concerned about the cost implications. Uh, it, it seems to have uh, taken a, a bit longer, and I'm just wondering how much more this is going to have cost us. You know, my concern is with a project of this size that council has not seen one change order. Uh, I, I need to wonder, you know, what's happened. Normally, within projects of this nature, you're going to see a few of them. So, if we're not seeing change orders, I'd like to know. I'm sure the council would like to know where these where these differences are being funded. Uh, unless we're being, uh, we were so close that no matter what we did, we were right on the dot. So. Uh, as regards to, uh, I know people have walked into the meeting room this evening and they saw a uniformed officer. Uh, this was placed there at the request of the mayor. Uh, the meeting room is, as council president, uh, is handled by me and the mayor handles in return in regards to meeting the rest of the building. So uh, I thank him for his compromise in that regard. I question why we still need it. I didn't see anybody here at, in any kind of difficulty or being challenged. So we'll, we'll let that go. Uh, lastly, I would like to comment on the issue of the amount of money being uh, it's going to be brought to bear by the MUA. Uh, I know that there's going to be an increase in 2023. Uh, I know that when I left the council about five years ago. Council President, would you bring the mic closer? These speakers are not on. Can you hear me now? Why don't you move up a little bit? I mean, <laughs> Sitting right on. Yeah, I can. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. When I left that, when I left the council, uh, there was to have been a study that had been approved, uh, given to the MUA for them to do a uh, study of the Route 94 car for uh, potential users. Uh, for the sewer service area. As I return five years later, I find no change. Literally, no change. We're talking about the same things. The only difference is that I do agree with one issue that came up, which we brought up at the last meeting, which is the dedicated septic hall. Uh, but as far as any uh, work with the DEP or our representatives. I don't know if we're getting shut down in Trenton or people are forgetting about it. Five years is a long time. And I would have expected that at least a few of the businesses on Route 94 would be identified as potential users because there are some substantial potential users for EDU along that corridor. So to say that, you know, 
this council is to be responsible if we don't bring in a business and how are we going to pay for the uh, increase in sewer revenue or sewer costs rather? I only had question, what about the other four to five years? Uh, the uh, previous, I'm sorry, I already got to say it. You were the boss for a long time and we still didn't get an awful lot in that regard. So, you know, I am just going to say, we'll try it again, maybe, and uh, working together, we can see if we can't get this township moving forward in that particular area. Okay, thank you. That concludes my comments. I have a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Mr. Kachiri. Is there a second? I'll second it, Mr. President. Second by Mr. Fulton. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Good night, everybody.